John had asked me to read a screenplay of his called uh, The San Demetria, which was a, uh, a feature film about a, uh, a British merchant Navy ship. He had written quite some time ago, and he'd, also, he'd, he'd written different versions of that script. I was a deck officer in the Merchant Navy, the British Merchant Navy. I was at sea for 13 years. Uh, I'm a qualified ship's captain, sailed as chief mate. And so I was uh, aware of this story, of the extraordinary story of the San Demetrio and what she went through. I had already done some preparatory thoughts and works about the Merchant Navy, about the uh, extraordinary number of people who were lost, um, the sacrifices that were made. It had actually been filmed back in 1943. Uh, there's a movie called uh, San Demetrio London. And I felt that the time had come where we, the story could be told again and this time, because of the advances in technology, we could actually really make it look astonishing. Um, it could be made as an, as an extraordinary experience for the film goer. We took a meeting with Jack Bowman, who uh, had produced a significant number of audios. And one evening at Soho House, we, uh, we started talking about it. And Jack brought up the idea of, of doing it as an audio movie. And he said, well, imagine uh, high-level feature film with the same level production values, you know, orchestral score, sound design as, uh, as a feature film without the picture. You know, he was very clear that this was a story that could be told in the audio sphere, but it would need a complete rewrite. Uh, obviously, a movie is primarily written for the eye, and this was going to be 100% for the ear. What proceeded from that was us taking a look at that original script, The San Demetrio, and building some other partnerships. We spoke with uh, a friend of mine from the UK, uh, Andrew Sewell, who runs a company called B7 Media, who have done a lot of radio for, for BBC Radio 4 and for Audible. And what we proceeded to do was take John's original screenplay, The San Demetria, and break it into 11 episodes, all with their own self-sustaining arcs, and rewrite it for audio, of which John went away with, of course, guidance from, from Jack and from Andrew, who'd done it before, and notes from myself. And we ended up with something that then we felt was still telling that story just as well, with, without the, 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 the pictures, as it were. And that took about four months or so uh, to transform it into what now has become uh, an 11-part episode on Singapore. The idea then was to move into production, but a little thing called COVID-19 decided to come along. And it was still something that we could very much do, it being an audio piece and not necessarily having to be on set. Misha and I have worked uh, in lockstep uh, on this project right from the beginning. Um, through the casting process, where we sat down together and made our lists of the actors we wanted to try and get, um, through to the uh, actual recording of each individual actor. We had 37 actors um, recording over 100 different roles. Every single time Misha and I were in the room together, um, COVID protected, we were in our own little bubble. Misha has a very good ear for truthful performances, non actuary but truthful performances, and he was able to give very fine direction to the actors to give the performances that we, we, we were after. We were able to utilize something called Source Connect, which was a fantastic bit of technology. It, it, it's been around for quite some time, but the ability to, to hear uh, an actor's voice coming down the pipes as if they're on the other side of the glass without actually being anywhere near them was, was fantastic. The, 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 the intonation in their voice, being able to, to get in and, and, and listen to what was going on in their performances and be able to, to direct down those, those lines and those pipes, you know, transmitting those zeros and ones in essentially high fidelity sound was, was a really big part of us being able to accomplish this. We had various film crews and being able to capture some of those performances was, was also very invaluable. Uh, a lot of my uh, involvement was making sure that the actors understood the environment that they were in, uh, particularly when on a ship. For example, how much noise there is, uh, the metal steps, the, uh, sort of the echoing type of uh, sound effects, how loudly people would have to speak. Into the post-production of then 
figuring out how we were going to put this entire puzzle of a hundred different characters back together and piece them back into a timeline. And we, uh, we had uh, help from a team in London. Helen Quigley did an enormous amount of very good work piecing back together every single one of those performances. John and I had, of course, notes of uh, favorite takes and things like that from each of our actors, but to then uh, approach that mammoth and put down all of those performances back in sequence and then making sure that the right energy was coming out from, from one actor to another without actually having the benefit of, of seeing those actors in the, in the same room. In fact, every single performance was individually done except that one, we did have uh, Juliet Aubrey and, um, and Rupert Van Sittart together. And uh, we were able to do that in London. We had them distanced in a studio at the time, so it was, uh, it was still permitted. And uh, it works great. The relationship absolutely benefits from that. But I would, I would go out there on a limb and say that I would think the majority of the performances in this Many people would struggle to tell those actors were never in the same room together.